Located in the Yorkshire countryside near Moulton lies Flamingo Land, an impressively sized family run theme park and zoo, featuring a wide array of thrills, animal exhibits, and family fun. Welcome to the grading series here on Loop Theme Park Adventures, where we assess five key aspects of a theme park visit and give each of them a grade from A plus to F minus, followed by an overall grade at the end. In today's video, we reflect on a sunny day spent at Flamingo Land on Friday the 24th of July, 2020. If you enjoy what we do here, then we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel for loads more theme park related content. Let's get into those grades. Flamingo Land boasts an impressive 37 attractions in its ride lineup, featuring a mixture of fun for all the family and larger rides for the thrill seekers. There are nine roller coasters on site, with a tenth opening in 2021. These are headlined by Kumali, a Vekoma SLC, which is surprisingly comfortable for this much maligned coaster model, as well as being visually impressive, although quite short in length. Mumbo Jumbo and SNS El Loco with a 112 degree beyond vertical drop and two inversions. And this is another ride that I enjoyed more than I expected to. Velocity is a Vekoma booster bike with a 54 mile an hour launch, which is a lot of fun, but I did find the restraints a little uncomfortable on the helixes. And finally, Hero, a Zamperla Volair slash torture device, which has no redeeming qualities. The remaining roller coasters at the park are focused more at families, with the standouts being Twistosaurus, a Zamperla twister coaster, which operated a two lap special and picked up some decent lateral forces on its rotations, Zoom which is a Zamperla Air Force and then you have the theme park staples like a runaway mine train and Go Gator. In terms of flat rides the thrills come in the form of Cliffhanger, a shot and drop tower which are always great fun, a star flyer in the form of Pterodactyl, a nicely themed pirate ship called Voodoo and Navigator, a Zamperla Disco, which I now think I've referenced in six or seven of the 10 grading videos I've put together. So this may be the most common ride type we have now in the UK. Younger guests are catered for with a wide range of family-friendly rides and entertainment, such as Cyclosaur, Heli Toys, Balloon Race, and a Frog Hopper, with many of the children's rides based in the nicely themed Dino Stone Park, Peter Rabbit Adventure, and Children's Planet. The entrance plaza has a large pirate ship stage, which is home to the Pirates of Zanzibar show, which is performed multiple times throughout the day. Unfortunately, there were also a number of attractions that were not in operation as the park have reduced their ride lineup while they run with a smaller staff due to the challenges they faced during the pandemic. This meant that three of the four transport rides weren't running, including both of the monorails and the cable cars, the fantastic looking Lost River ride, Flip Flop, Navigator, Splash Battle and the Flamingo One race course were also out of action. In addition to the rides, Flamingo Land also have a sizeable zoo, with some really nicely thought out enclosures featuring a wide variety of animals such as giraffes, tigers, lions, monkeys, rhinos, zebra, meerkats, penguins, kangaroos, wallabies and loads more. It's certainly worth setting aside an hour or two to explore this side of the park as there is plenty to see and experience. Rides and Attractions gets a B-. I'm grading the attractions lineup as a whole here as I'll address the ride availability in the operations and customer service section, but it's hard to argue with the amount on offer here for both thrill seekers and families alike. The coaster lineup feels like it lacks a big hitter to build the rest of the coasters around, but they do have a 10 inversion Intamin opening next year, which will certainly help. Kamali and Mumbo Jumbo were unexpected surprises, and I love a good shot and drop, so Cliffhanger was enjoyable for me. I was also impressed by the zoo, which has enclosures of a decent size, a well-considered layout, and animals that appeared content in their surroundings. The only real shame here was that I was unable to view the zoo from the cable cars or the zoo monorail. Flamingo Land is set in a dip, so from the car park you have great views of the theme park's skyline. It's also deceptively large, with many of the park's attractions and the zoo wrapping around the right side of the car park, away from view. The entrance plaza leads you into a nice open space surrounded by shops and restaurants on each side, as well as the stage set for Pirates of Zanzibar, with a seated area in the middle. There is a general African theme that runs throughout the park with rides such as Kumali named after the leader of the park's Pride of Lions and African style music playing in a number of sections. So there is a conscious effort to tie the attractions and the zoo together. There are however rides and areas which have their own distinct theme, with Hero being based around an alien invasion and Dino Stone Park being a large family area focused on, well, dinosaurs, with large structures of dino bones on display. Much of the park feels quite open and spacious, which is ideal for the times we currently live in. The back of the park is where it gets slightly more confused. You have cliffhangers, impressive rock work and waterfall, but when you turn around, there are a couple of caravans plonked inside the park to advertise accommodation at the adjoining caravan park. 
perhaps these wouldn't have stood out so much if the various food outlets in that area had been open. On the whole though, this felt like a pleasant, clean and mostly well maintained park to be in, although perhaps one or two more shaded areas would be beneficial, as on a hot summer's day as it was when I visited, there weren't too many places to get out of the sun. Look and feel of the park gets a B- grade, a nice looking and feeling park which I enjoyed exploring. It's clean and well appointed with nice theming in some areas of the park. Some of the rides such as Velocity lack any real theme though and not a great deal of thought has gone into the queue lines for most of the attractions. I think we all understand and expect there to be some changes to ride availability at theme parks during these challenging times, but even still, I was a little disappointed at the number of attractions that were either out of action or only operating on a limited schedule. As I mentioned in the rides and attractions section, there are quite a few rides not operating at all right now, including all of the water rides, most of the transport rides and some of the thrill rides. Most of these are advertised on the website, but there are also a number of attractions which are only operating for a few hours of the day, such as Kamali, Voodoo and Runaway Mine Train which all opened after 2pm and Cliffhanger which only operated from 10am to 2pm. This was compounded on the day I visited by an incident on Velocity which saw this experience extended downtime too. So in the morning once I'd ridden Mumbo Jumbo and Cliffhanger the only other thrill options available were Hero which I was happy to avoid and Pterodactyl which was building up a sizeable queue. While the operating schedule on Cliffhanger was signposted I didn't see anything advertising the opening times for the other attractions I mentioned. The impression I got was that some rides would open until 2pm then close so the ride operators could move on to another attraction. And I get it, times are difficult but other parks are finding ways to get a much larger percentage of their rides open. And I'm not just talking about the corporate giants like Merlin. Other family run parks such as Fantasy Island, Pleasurewood Hills, Oakwood and Adventure Island are running practically all of their rides with only a few exceptions. Other than this fairly major gripe, the actual ride operations were mostly decent, with queues moving along quite quickly and all staff I encountered being polite and friendly. The queues for food was a different story though, but I'll get onto that in the next section. Covid safety measures were in place throughout the park, with social distancing markers at the entrance to the park and in the queues for all the rides, hand sanitizer stations at entrance to rides and food outlets, as well as a requirement to wear masks on the majority of the attractions and in indoor areas. Operations and customer service gets a D+. It's a real shame to have to grade this quite low, as I did really enjoy my day at the park, but there were so many rides that weren't available, and I wasn't a fan of the limited operations on some of the rides that were open. I can understand staggering the opening of one or two attractions, but by 2pm some guests are starting to leave the park. I really hope that the 2021 season sees a larger percentage of the attractions open and operating for the majority of the day. Unfortunately, dining options were also incredibly limited at Flamingoland, to the point where there isn't even a huge amount for me to grade here. Upper Deck Fish and Chips and Zanzibar's Food Market were the only food outlets I could find open for lunch and both had large and slow moving queues. I opted for Zanzibar's as it advertised a variety of food options, but once inside only the Burger Shack section was open. After waiting for around 30 minutes, I grabbed myself a fairly bland burger meal priced at around £8. The two staff members on hand were visibly stressed and I did feel a bit sorry for them. I believe the mansion house and tea rooms were also open and possibly Muddy Duck Cafe, but without a park map or a Flamingo Land app to check, I wasn't even aware where they were located until I explored the zoo later in the day. There was also an ice cream shack in the centre of the park, which was understandably doing great business on such a warm day. Dining options gets a C-. Much like with the rides, it felt like more could be done to get some of the other outlets open for guests to provide some more choice. Seeing some quite nice looking restaurants dotted around the park which were closed was a bit frustrating, but in fairness this has been a weakness for a lot of parks this year, not just Flamingoland. Day tickets for the park start at £33 and are required to be pre-booked online, with the guests selecting a time slot for entry. Single annual passes are £140, which seems quite steep to me as you'd have to visit on at least five occasions to get good value for money. I believe on-ride photos are available on a selection of the rides, but I didn't see any in operation when I visited and the main merchandise store in the entrance plaza was also closed. Food was fairly typical of a UK theme park, a bit overpriced and not of particularly great quality. The zoo offers a variety of animal encounters and adoption programs which can be found on the website. Car parking was free, which is always great to see. 
Value for money gets a C. A day ticket is pretty good value for the amount that's on offer. Taking into consideration you get entry to both the theme park and the zoo for that. And I appreciate that they have lowered the entry fee in consideration of the number of rides that are unavailable this season. Annual passes do seem quite expensive though, and dining options were priced as you'd expect for a theme park. However, free parking is always a nice bonus. So overall, Flamingo Land gets a C plus grade. It's a shame to only give an above average grade to what is actually a really nice park. And honestly, it's one of the theme parks I'm most looking forward to revisiting next year, as I'd really like to see it in full flow with all of the rides and attractions open and operating. I did have a really enjoyable day, but the negatives, namely the amount of rides that weren't available and the very limited dining options are quite sizable. So I have to take those into consideration. I do genuinely understand how difficult operating a theme park and zoo must be in these times, but I'm comparing against other parks who are suffering the same difficulties. Fingers crossed that Flamingo Land can bounce back in 2021. The opening of a huge new roller coaster should hopefully entice guests in high enough numbers for the park to bring back more staff and get more attractions up and running in a safe and sensible manner. Have you been to Flamingo Land this year? Do you agree with our grades? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and I'll aim to reply to each one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and get involved in the discussion in the comments below. If you'd like to follow our theme park adventures then subscribe to the channel and enable notifications. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash loop TPA and on Instagram at loop TPA.